cannot forget this dog and the person holding it in famous scene where he actually physically attacked me, which seemingly disappeared from future current affair and news scenes. I requested of the police to bring an assault charge against this person because he grabbed my hand, they grabbed my camera out of it, but couldn't. And funny enough, uh, the police investigated and said there was no evidence, despite it being filled and screened that day nationwide on a current affair. But funny, that footage uh, subsequently disappeared. Yeah, all they would screen was him just coming up to the car. Um, you never saw what happened after. But I still have the video, and here it is. Well, one, police say there is no evidence of assault. Well, I guess it must be uh, fake news that it didn't really happen, that uh, this is all special effects. And even though it actually hit me, uh, trying to grab the uh, camera out of my hands, physically touch me, uh, obviously it's all fake news. Oh, and the woman there is Jonica Bray, the uh, producer for A Current Affair on this segment. She's looking a little uh, intimidated there, but <laughs> it's a wonder he didn't issue a, a parking fine on behalf of Wollongong City Council. This, of course, was all over this infamous incident at Christmas, <laughs> well, a time, 2011. Nothing like using children to get free publicity and to rubbish neighbours all over this cubby house. Yes, this cubby house, built not by the owner of the property, but by a neighbour who lived across the road, but is now uh, divorced from his wife and moved out of the area. Now, how did that work out? Oh, well, I guess one could always load the gun, but get somebody else to fire the bullets. Anyway, the thing is that uh, in a residential section, you can build a cubby house without council permission. But hey, this is not a residential section where that's located. It's E2, environmental conservation. And they should have asked council. Anyway, that matter is covered in cubby gate one. Uh, what we have here is not a failure to communicate, but a cubby house that was never used. A door was put on the front, a lock was put on the uh, uh, door and uh, and subsequently no one ever used it and it fell into deterioration over the years. Oh, notice those uh, branches missing and cut and the tree cut. Hmm, interesting too. Yeah, besides all that, a cubby house that no one seemed to play in. I mean, with those deteriorated steps, I mean, that's, that's no concern for any children. And why was there always a lock on the door? I mean, no residents saw anything there at all, but we see that branch cut, and then we have a look at the rest, and we see, well, they've all been locked. You know, I mean, what was wrong with them, except they were attached to the cubby house. So this was getting fairly interesting, and nothing much changed at all until one day, four years later. So let's zip along, four years later, the 25th of September, 2018, and, and we see something happening. The roof is gone, but hang on a moment, where are the windows in there for the kids to look out? And, you know, that door, it was a very strange setup. It was more like a, a, a big box. So that it mysteriously disappeared altogether. And we had some dead trees there, and we had the nice view of a water tank, and uh, I thought, hmm, how interesting, what will happen now? But we didn't have to wait that long. Hello, 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 what are all these logs lying about? So uh, we managed to get a closer look, and who, oh, lo and behold, tree stumps, three tree stumps on the west side. But funny enough, just sneaking in there behind those bushes onto the uh, left side there is the other tree trunk, and that's still standing. Hmm, more interesting. So all went quiet for a week or so, and then action started happening. We had our uh, tree fell over back, and we had the excavator in there. And what is the excavator doing in there? I guess it must be excavating. 
Indeed, this was getting intriguing. How much further will it go? Before we nip around the corner to see what the latest thing is that's going on, have a look at this intersection. Left and right, we have stop signs giving way to stopping for what? The dead end of Stonehaven Road. Very curious. This all uh, happened under the uh, Wollongong uh, City Council when it was uh, corrupt. Hmm, how about that? Some of us even tried to get a stop sign there at the end of Stonehaven. Why give way to a dead end? But no, overruled by that corrupt council. Hmm. Someone must have had a, a good contact there in the hierarchy and management of the council. Hmm. Oh, and just for added interest, you'll see over there on the right-hand side a bus stop. Now, that bus stop was over on the left-hand corner where that uh, drain uh, way uh, was just about situated. But for reasons unknown, got moved. And now when the bus pulls up, it sticks out into the intersection. How weird is that? But hey, you know, when you got influence, Okay, so let's go back around the corner now. We've had a look at that intersection and let's see what's happening. Oh, good heavens, this gentleman's carrying a large piece of Rio, Rio, which is used in concreting. So, what can be going in? A two story a cubby house? Who knows? We well, shall sure have to keep an eye out. So, the next day we go for another drive and hello, hello, hello. What's happening here? That looks to be a concrete mixer truck. Hmm, they must be putting in impressive uh, stuff, perhaps to accommodate hobbits or something in a small place like the cubby house. Anyway, this was still getting very, very interesting. Although we can see some men down there now. What are they up to? Anyway, let's cross this intersection and there's that bus stop and the entry to the council reserve which is sometimes used for uh, private parking for functions at the health retreat which apparently is not part of their conditions hmm okay so let's go for this drive-by we can see that the land has been cleared there on the national parks and wildlife service land however apparently it's quite illegal to do that on their land and we see some uh, a shed there must Hold the gas tank and let's have a look here. Well, there's our freshly cut down trees and uh, and stuff on the on the on the nature strip. But hang on, there's some uh, work going on in there, some boards or something. Hmm, all very interesting. After all the schmozzle that they kicked up about this cubby house in the media and everywhere else that they could hope to blame uh, others for uh, their uh, illegal uh, cubby house in this uh, E2 environmental zone. Um, I should have got council permission. That's all I had to do. But no, like everybody else, they get retrospective DAs, particularly of Wollongong City Council. So what was going here? What was this for? A courtyard? Something else? But it didn't take long to find the answer. So a few days later, what was this strange looking thing? Ah, and what was on this truck? That looks like a, uh, some sort of possibly a generator. But there was a lot of uh, handling and this uh, big box, uh, which clearly looks like a generator, uh, was passed over and placed in this little area beyond where the cubby house used to be so possibly in the end this generator was placed in there minus these trees uh, because well we do get blackouts in the area and possibly uh, the functions at this uh, health retreat which the owner said would never be seen from Stanwell Park <laughs> <laughs> and in local media, the other owner said the cubby was barely visible from the street. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Mm, not the fact that it was in an E2 environmental conservation zone and attached to trees. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I guess the functions um, are interrupted uh, by blackouts, which is a real pity.
Or maybe it's there for a Tesla charging station. I wonder if it requires a development application from council. Hmm. Oh, what am I saying? Especially not in a E2 zone, environmental conservation. Uh, or... Oh,